Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 8th of July, and it's National Video Game Day. And a big happy birthday to Jaden Smith, Kevin Bacon, Monty Don, and Isabel Hines Thompson. It did seem as though he had more lives than Larry the Downing Street Cat, but finally, after three years of mayhem, reality caught up with Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Thursday. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. His resignation came after he was caught out in a lie over Deputy Chief Whip Chris Pencher, which was followed by a tidal wave of resignations, starting with Rishi Sunak and Sajid Javid and mounting throughout a 36-hour period with almost 60 quitting in total. Even at the end, Boris wasn't exactly taking responsibility. But of course it's painful not to be able to see through so many ideas and, and projects myself. But as we seen at Westminster, the herd instinct is powerful. When the herd moves, it moves. It finished off to a chorus of boos, ending what was not even three years in power in disgrace. To you, the British public, I know that there will be many people who are relieved and perhaps quite a few who will also be disappointed. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world. But them's the breaks. Boris Johnson's fall from grace involved hitting many different branches along the way, including most recently when he battled through a vote of no confidence over Partygate. But Tory MP Robert Halfen says eventually even the Tory faithful had had enough. There's a loss of trust from the public because of everything that's going on one month after another, whether it's the parties or other scandals, and we're not being able to deliver on the things that the public want us to deliver on. A man who's familiar with falls of grace, Matt Lavish Holiday's Hancock, says that once a Prime Minister starts to lose his senior ministers, the the game is up. Well, with great sadness, it's time for the Prime Minister to resign. Unfortunately, he's lost the confidence of his cabinet. And if Boris is hoping his legacy will polish up well, his former press secretary, Will Walden, isn't optimistic about that either. But I think he will also remember somebody that fundamentally didn't listen and that became somewhat presidential. Even though Boris has formally quit as Tory leader, he stays on in Downing Street on a caretaker basis. He spent Thursday making new appointments and holding a cabinet meeting and has signalled he'll stay on until a new Tory leader is elected. Former Housing Minister Stuart Andrews says that's all perfectly normal. There is nothing abnormal about the Prime Minister who is resigning continuing until the new leader has been elected. Now that the President's dead or at least done well, the Tory leadership contest has kicked off, with early favourites being Rishi Sunak and Defence Minister Ben Wallace, although neither of formally declared their candidacy. Attorney General Suella Braverman was an early candidate rushing in on Peston's show on Wednesday night. If there is a leadership contest, I will put my name into the ring. On Thursday night, MP Tom Tugendhat threw his name into the ring to replace Boris, saying it's time for renewal. Liz Truss, Nadim Zahawi, Jeremy Hunt and Sajid Javid are all expected to step forward soon, with only Michael Gove and Dominic Raab formally ruling themselves out. Self-styled hard man of Brexit, Steve Baker surprised the BBC by popping his hat into the ring live on air. Of course I'm seriously considering standing, because Conservative Home members consistently put me in their top ten. In other world news, ex-Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been shot while out campaigning in local elections in Nara, West Japan. Rushed by helicopter to hospital, reports have emerged that he suffered cardiopulmonary arrest and isn't showing any vital signs. Police arrested a man at the scene. Thursday saw Russia carry out new strikes on the city of Kramatorsk and Slavansk, killing at least one and injuring many more. This comes as Russian President Putin told Kiev it should quickly accept Moscow's terms for settlement or prepare for the worst. In a meeting with his parliamentary leaders, Putin warned that Moscow's barely started its military campaign and dared the West to try and defeat it on the battlefield. At the same time, we don't refuse peace talks, but those who refuse should know that the longer it lasts, the more difficult it will be for them to make a deal with us. Still to come on the Smart 7, Wimbledon sees history made and there's an all-star cast heading to Amsterdam. Right after this. Welcome back. Thursday saw the women's semi-finals wrap up at Wimbledon, with Tunisia's on Chabur beating Germany's Tatiana Maria. The second final spot went to Russian-born but Kazakhstan-registered Elena Rybakina, who beat former world number one Simona Halep. 
On Chabur, who played as Serena Williams' doubles partner at the Eastbourne tournament, became the first female African player and the first Arab player to reach a Grand Slam final. Thursday evening also saw Rafa Nadal's bid for Wimbledon glory end as he withdrew from his scheduled semi-final match against Nick Kyrgios due to injury. The 22-time Grand Slam winner's withdrawal means Kyrgios will get to play his first Grand Slam final with a walkover, making him the first player to do so in the open era. A visibly disappointed Nadal spoke. I don't want to go out there and not be competitive enough to play at the level that I need to play to, to achieve my goal and with big chance to make the things uh, much worse. Clear your diary for November. There's a brand new David O. Russell movie on the way. It's a period mystery comedy, not a genre we see too often, but it's got an incredible cast, including oh, Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Rock, Mike Myers, Rami Malek, Robert De Niro, and Taylor Swift, and you know what, many, many more. It's called Amsterdam, and it's due to hit cinemas on November the 4th. So, two soldiers and a nurse found ourselves in... Amsterdam. We formed a pact, and we swore to protect each other, no matter what. Actor James Kahn has died at the age of 82. He rose to fame as Sonny Corleone in the Godfather trilogy, which earned him an Oscar nomination. He was famed as a bit of a party animal and briefly disappeared from view in the 80s, returning to stardom in Stephen King's Misery opposite Kathy Bates. He had continued success with Elf, but will always be best remembered as Sonny Corleone. May his passing be a blessing. They're saps because they risk their lives for strangers. Oh, that's pop talking. You're goddamn right, that's pop talking. They risk their lives for their country country ain't your blood you remember that i don't feel that way i don't feel that way well if you don't feel like that why don't you just quit college and go to go to join the army i did i enlisted in the marines this has been the smart seven wherever you're listening do us a favor and hit the follow button we'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m have a great day